Lecture 4.3, Using Derivatives for Curve Sketching. This, of course, is Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park. This photo was taken in 1995, and as you can see from all the dead trees in the background, there was a forest fire the year before. This is Yellowstone Falls in Yellowstone National Park. And this is Mammoth Hot Springs, also in Yellowstone National Park. In the past, one of the important uses of derivatives was as an aid in curve sketching. Even though we usually use a calculator or computer to draw complicated graphs, it is still important to understand the relationships between derivatives and graphs. First derivative. If y prime is positive, the curve is rising. If y prime is negative, the curve is falling. And if y prime is zero, there's a possible local maximum or minimum. Once again, remember that y prime is the slope. When we look at the second derivative, if y double prime is positive, then the curve is concave up. If y double prime is negative, the curve is concave down. I had a student one time that told me he remembered which one curved which way, because if you're positive, you're smiling. And if you're negative, you're frowning. If y double prime is zero, there's a possible inflection point. That is, a point where the concavity changes. Example. Graph y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4, which factors to x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. There are roots at x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. If we look at the first derivative, y prime is 3x squared minus 6x setting y prime equal to 0. We can factor out a 3 and then factor out an x. And we see that x could be 0 or 2. That tells us that there are possible extremes at x equals 0 and 2. We can use a chart to organize our thoughts. The first derivative test looks like this. We know that at 0, the derivative is 0. And at 2, the first derivative is 0. Now we need to investigate what happens between those points. If we plug in 1, which is a point between 0 and 2, we see that y prime of 1 is negative 3. Since it's negative, that means the original curve is sloping downward. If we try negative 1, which would be a point to the left of the first critical point, we see that y prime of negative 1 is 9, which is positive. Therefore, the curve is increasing at that point. Finally, 
we plug in 3, which is a point to the right of the second critical point, we see that y prime of 3 is 9, which is also positive. So the slope is increasing. So we can think about this. It's increasing level, decreasing level, increasing. Therefore, there's a maximum at zero. Once again, it increased to zero and then went back down. So there must be a maximum there and a minimum at 2 because as we can picture the original graph went down leveled off and then back up at 2. On the AP exam it is not sufficient to simply draw the chart and write the answer. You must give a written explanation. This would do it. There is a local maximum at 0, 4 because y prime is greater than 0 for all x in the interval from negative infinity to 0, and y prime is less than 0 for all x in the interval from 0 to 2. There is a local minimum at 2, 0 because y prime is less than 0 for all x in the interval 0 to 2, and y prime is greater than 0 for all x in the interval 2 to infinity. Or you could use the second derivative test. We find the second derivative, y double prime equals 6x minus 6. y double prime of 0, which is our first critical point, is negative 6. Because the second derivative at x equals 0 is negative, the graph is concave down. Therefore, 0, 4 is a local maximum. Picture the graph. It goes up and back down. Because it's concave down, there must be a maximum there. Plugging 2 into the second derivative, y double prime of 2 equals 6, which means it's concave up. Therefore, there must be a local minimum. Because the second derivative at x equals 2 is positive, the graph is concave up, and therefore 2, 0 is a local minimum. We then look for inflection points by setting the second derivative equal to 0. y double prime equals 6x minus 6. We set that equal to 0. We get 6 equals 6x. Or 1 equals x. So there's a possible inflection point at x equals 1. We still have to test to make sure it is an inflection point. So we make a chart of y double prime. We know that at x equals 1 the second derivative is 0. If we plug in 0, which is a point to the left, we see y double prime of 0 is negative 6. So we have a negative second derivative. We plug in 2, which is a point to the right of our possible inflection point we get a second derivative value of 6, which is positive. So what we see is the original graph must change from concave down to concave up at x equals 1. And since the concavity changes, it's an inflection point. There is an inflection point at x equals 1 because the second derivative changes from negative to positive.
Now we make a summary table. At x equals negative 1, we calculate y equals 0, y prime is 9, and y double prime is negative 12. Because the first derivative is positive, the graph is rising, and because the second derivative is negative, the graph is concave down. Put that point on the graph. At x equals 0, y is 4, y prime is 0, so the graph is horizontal, and because y double prime is negative, the graph is concave down, and it's a local max. At x equals 1, y is 2, y prime is negative 3, so it's falling, y double prime is 0, and we confirmed earlier that that was an inflection point. At x equals 2, y is 0, y prime is 0, so once again the graph is horizontal, y double prime is 6, and since y double prime is positive, it's concave up making it a local minimum. And at x equals 3, y is 4, y prime is 9, which means the graph is rising fairly steeply, y double prime is 12, which means the graph is concave up. So now that we know what the graph looks like, we connect the dots.